Sir, my first thought on seeing your headline, Pupils to be taught about sex at seven, was, what, in the morning? When I was a child, the school day began with prayer, but you can't stop progress. Peter Homer, Highworth, Wiltshire. Well, I had the idea last year for this book when I was working on, the, I was doing a maternity cover on the letters desk, and I, I just saw that every day we were having six to seven hundred letters a day, of which we printed 20. And lots of the ones that went, which didn't go in, were rubbish or libelous or mad. But lots were very, very funny and we just didn't have space. So we did it last year. It was a big success. And the, again, this year I thought, I, I, you know, can I really be bothered to wade through all these letters again? But it, it's a bit like, I, I think it's a bit like mining for gold. You, you keep on going through and eventually you, you find this amazing letter and it makes you laugh out loud and it becomes worth it and people enjoy it. I think there's something interesting about letters too, that blogs are often, um, you don't, they're anonymous, you don't put your name to it. If you write a letter, even if it's an email to the editor, you still put your name, you put your address, um, you're ascribing yourself to that thing. So they're often well crafted and often very funny. Sir, when I was an 11 year old schoolboy, I was pilloried in front of the class by a waspish schoolmarm because I admitted a lack of interest in football. 72 years later, I still cannot see the merit in watching 22 overpaid thickheads kicking, cuddling and posturing on muddy turf. When a goal is scored, why does the player run around, arms akimbo, gob agape, behaving like a spoilt brat, as though to say, look at me, mummy, aren't I a clever little boy? After which the other players all go into a group, cuddle, like a bunch of teenage schoolgirls celebrating their A-level results. And if we must suffer television interviews, could the players not be coached in basic elocution and English grammar? Yours in despair, Harry Smith, Welly Garden City, Hertfordshire. Sir, I have a soft spot for Sarah Ferguson. My dream girl looked like her, and she reminds me of a boisterous Labrador, my favourite breed of dog. Mark Taha, London, SC26. But the good ones are always a personalised one, something out of someone's own experience or own expertise, or one where often the best ones are actually written not because they want to be published and they're not written with an ego in mind or they want to see their name in print, but because they just feel so strongly about something. And something that, I suppose if you have a million people reading the paper and only, say, 800 journalists working here, someone among those a million people is going to have a thought or a joke or an insight which we can never think of ourselves. And when you see those, it's very satisfying.